But we're also at risk for events including mudslides and earthquakes that could leave us cut off for days at a time. If you don't already have a disaster preparedness kit, you can start today. Roxanne Castleman Refault from the Pierce County Emergency Management Department is here. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So we know and, and we'll have tips online for the big thing that you might want at home if you're mm -hmm. stuck at home. But today we're going to concentrate on you got to get out of here right. and what do you need, Yes. Um, which is actually probably a pretty likely scenario, right? You're yes. at work, you're at school, you're someplace in your right. car. Yes. So where do we begin? Sure. So uh, our bucket list right here has some suggestions about things that you might already have at home. Some extra bottles of water, some snacks, some extra medicine that you might need every day. And so you start at home really just kind of piling in things that you already have and putting it in one place, one kit, usually by an exit door. Mm -hmm. So you have it ready to go when you need it. Maybe the door into the garage or by the front door someplace. Yeah. Now you mentioned medications and I'm thinking, you know, we all have trouble getting <laughs> refills before our insurance company says sure. it's okay. So how do you go about getting a supply of the medications you'd need for your kid, your pet, sure. etc.? Sure. So some medications you might be able to refill a week in advance. Some medications you might get samples for. Other medications you just need to speak with your medical professional team and see what they can do. Probably a good idea to keep a list then of what everybody needs. Absolutely. And we have that right here. Um, it is available oh, on I our website. These. Yes, yeah. it is available on our website. So you write down all the information because in a disaster, it might be likely that your phone may not work, and a lot of us mm -hmm. put our information in our phones, and if our phones die or they Ew, don't work, point. we don't have that information available. Yeah. So having it already written down and preferably in a Ziploc bag because wet paper doesn't do any good, right. uh, having it in our kit and ready to go, we have it with us anywhere we are. Excellent tip. Okay, let's talk about the things that we might want in a in a suitcase, and I loved this idea because don't we all have a suitcase that's kind of, it's too beat up, we don't carry yes. it around anymore, part of, you know, something on the inside came loose, but it can be a perfect place to store your supplies. Yes, a lot of times people have uh, rolling suitcases or bags that are just being stored in our closet or mm -hmm. um, in our home, and we're just not using them and they're empty. Um, the beautiful part about suitcases is that they're rolling suitcases, right. so you don't have to lift something heavy, um, and they're already made to travel with, and that's a whole essence about that. So these are really kind of packed and ready to go. Um, when you're ready to go on vacation, you dump it out and pack it for your vacation and, and turn that over. Your backpack is something that you can use in your car, um, have at your work. And a bucket is pretty durable. They're waterproof. They're inexpensive at a hardware store. They can also be stored in your car at work or at home. So there's a couple different options that people might have. But really, all together, the message is use what you already have at home. Right, and we probably do have things like this. So very exactly. easy. I hadn't even thought about the bucket, but it's yeah. got a handle, and you can grab yeah. it and go. So let's talk about some of the things that we need to think about. Um, just take me through what you have here, starting with the headlight. Sure. Everybody should have a light at you know with you everywhere you are. So. Um, um, whether you put it in your glove box, um, in your in your kit, but everybody needs light, right? So oftentimes the power goes out through a winter storm, um, something like that happens, and so we need to always have light with us. Um, you can't really see what damages have happened mm -hmm. or what's going on without having that light available. Um, kind of the message behind having that light is the more the better. So yeah. having those stashed everywhere. Um, so in the Northwest, we know that being cold is bad, right? So <laughs> uh, staying warm is incredibly important. So always having a blanket with you, having an emergency blanket with you. Mm -hmm. And in essence, what this is, is just staying dry, right? So you're not going to have hypothermia. Um, so if you get cold, um, that can change the whole game plan exactly. there. Exactly, and we can start accumulating those and just adding them to yes. the bag. Yes. Um, talk to me about this because this seems like this is a must have. The weather radio, um, you can get these uh, pretty much anywhere, but they can range from 20 to $80. They work the same. So um, the beautiful part about these weather radios, a lot of times they have lights on them, mm -hmm. um, they have cranks, yep. so uh, they can have batteries, but they also have, yep, they have the Flash light on light. too, right? And the USB charger, so you can continue to charge your phone or other devices that you might need in a disaster. So you can crank that baby up to give <laughs> yes. it energy and yes. then plug your phone in there Absolutely. if you need to. Yes. That's brilliant. Yep. What is this? Uh, clothing. Just, just extra clothing yeah. that you might need with you. Um, so Throw your t-shirts and old right. coat in there and, and right. do that. So the essence with your bag in your bucket is to have something that can get by, right? Mm -hmm. So at least three days, at least. So you've got these Quest cookies, which I actually really love. There's lots of protein in those. Those yes. will kind of keep you satisfied yes. and they'll, you know, 
take a look at when they expire and replace them, yep. but you won't mind eating them in the meantime. <laughs> Check your kit good. at least once a year. Yep. All right, let's talk about water and making drinking water safe. Right, water is incredibly important, right? Whether it's um, for hydration, hygiene, um, for injuries, water is incredibly important. So having multiple sources of water um, that you need to have with you at all times is, is really kind of the main key. So we have a water bottle here, emergency water that it has a stable shelf life, uh, water bottles, and also a life straw that you can access different water sources and it will kind mm -hmm. of strain out the thing that you're not supposed to ingest. Which you may be down to in <laughs> right. a situation like this. If you've put water away like in a, you know, in a jug or whatever in the garage, how often should we be replacing that to make sure it's safe? Sure, it depends on the water source itself. Personally, I check my water sources at least once a year. Um, okay. What you don't want to uh, be is in a situation where you're in a disaster and then your water or food sources or anything that has an expiration date is no longer effective or you can't ingest it and then you're sick in a disaster. Don't so, want that. Right. So, so how do you keep track of it? Do you put it in your phone? Do you put it on your calendar? How do you make sure you get to it? For me personally, I use a, a, a Sharpie marker, which you should already have in your kit anyway um, for its own purposes of messaging or triaging or right. marking uh, you know different things that you need in an emergency. Um, I personally mark the side of the water source so I have jugs and, and mm -hmm. gallons of water and I put the expiration date right there visible. Okay perfect. Tell me a little bit about what we have here. Sure so again staying dry um, uh, Tarp. right, and having a temporary shelter ponchos again staying mm -hmm. dry it, it totally changes the game if you get wet in a disaster and emergency. And they're little tiny you don't have to you know right. something heavy just right, do that. Exactly they're great for a commuter kit. So you have your hand sanitizer always staying clean. You don't want to pass idea. on the germs. Your uh, uh, ice scraper, uh, flashlight, whistle, all those things are the emergency supplies that you can have that are small, packable, especially for our commuter kits. Mm -hmm. It also has a phone charger there. Um, so again, if you have something you need to access on your phone, at least it still has power. And you can definitely, you know, put your leave, whatever else like that, band-aids. And yes. we, oh, we didn't talk about that, but you know, a first aid kit, you can just buy one Absolutely. or put one together. Right. Um, and you guys have lots of lists yep. about what to think about in that regard. Okay, what's going on over here? Right, so ingesting uh, things that really shouldn't be in our bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, again, already having a disaster, we don't want to ingest other things. Uh, debris, ash, that kind of thing. Smoke, whatever. Right, absolutely. Um, so obviously during uh, disasters, we might be in a position where we might have to move heavy things, we might have damage to the structures we're in or around. So working gloves are very mm -hmm. important. The last thing you want to do is harm your hands and then you can't use them through that disaster. And you're right, we probably have this stuff, right? Yes. So just put it in the kit if you need to use it, take it out and then put it back in the kit right. and you're in pretty good shape. Absolutely. Um, what are your other suggestions for food? I, you know, I never know, should I collect cans? That seems like that's awfully heavy. Do you have any suggestions around sure. that? Sure. So food supplies, if you are staying home and your plan is to shelter in place and you are going to use a can opener, a food source, a heat source, that's fine to have at home. Um, if you're on the go, like these kinds of kits that we see here, obviously lighter food that you don't have to cook is kind of the primary point of that. Um, packaged food, high protein. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people um, talk about having peanut butter or nuts, which is great. Um, uh, tuna fish, it's great, except for the fact that oftentimes we forget or overlook checking our kit. So those oils and those types of foods can go bad and rancid. So we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we can have food poisoning or get sick on top of a disaster. So if you're going to have them, make sure that you check every year. Okay, that's a good thing to know um, and to remind ourselves about. But I'm super excited about the uh, suitcase idea. Boy, do I have a lot of bad <laughs> suitcases that can be repurposed.